So you don't have time to consume an entire podcast. That's okay. Enjoy the highlights on TRS Clips. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you hit that bell icon. So I asked Twitter Janta mm-hmm. that if you had to ask one of India's youngest billionaires, Nikhil Kamath of Zero Dha, any kind of question, mm-hmm. what would you ask him? Firstly, Ramesh Mishra asks, ask if he can fund my startup. I need to start dairy farm and organic farming in my hometown, where my lands of my forefathers are lying idle, and here I'm struggling to make ends meet. In many cases, a business can be started without external funding, and mm. if it's farming, I'm guessing you can get that capital locally. Uh, you know, because you're in the world of finance, you have to study multiple kinds of industries. Uh-huh. What is the future of agriculture in general? Because I hear so many mixed yeah. opinions yeah. from people who've actually been in it. They yeah. say that there's a lot of potential. Mm-hmm. I speak to a business coach like Vivek Bindra, mm-hmm. and he says that no, the margins in that industry are mm-hmm. now are not that high. Yeah. What's I your mean, perspective? I'm, on I'm no expert here, but. If I had to wager a guess, I would say aggregation is the way forward. Mm. Uh, a lot of what the government is doing also seems to be hinting at that. Mm. So we might uh, we might have a world where we have fewer farms but much larger and a lot more organized. Mm. Uh, that'll create an all new problem. What the farmers of today will do, and we'll have to, as a government, I think, preempt it right. and make sure they're taken care of, and they have some other avenue to move yeah. to. I think you asked me my goal yeah. uh, in about why I'm doing this, yeah. and I said twenty thousand jobs. Yeah. I, for some reason, something in my heart says that I have to do something for the agriculture world. Yeah. Yeah. I've discussed it with one of my guys as well, yeah. who's had a past yeah. in agriculture. I, I have an opinion here. I think uh, uh, there's no taxation on farm income, right? I think beyond a cap, uh, it is. It has been misutilized so much in our history. If a farmer is earning more than a crore a year, I think they should be income tax. Mm. I think they should be taxed like other people in the country. The small farm farmers, of course, have to be protected, and I think that change will bring a bring a lot of clarity in this ecosystem. Mm. Cool. Uh, next one's a little more personal. Yeah. Mr. Hari Haran asks, mm-hmm. uh, "It's great seeing you doing a podcast with Mr. Nikhil. Ask him how he takes his success." after the lockdown and how he's handling it right now uh why I, why don't you why don't you expand on the concept <laughs> of success i uh, knowing yeah. you i don't even think you believe you're successful no, yet no i don't think so i think uh, i'm still an insecure person in many ways and that's uh, that's all of us <laughs> my brother <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah i think uh i think surrounding yourself with the right people is the most important thing here i think to have people who criticize contradict are skeptical about everything you're doing and uh, valuing their opinion is uh, important i think you stay level headed as long as you do that mm. um the next question from the same person is what made you guys believe that your idea of starting zero dha mm-hmm. would result in success when you all were starting out what was your initial hunch uh again it was very organic i i don't think i'm a big fan of planning also because i've planned many things in life and they've never really worked out uh, so it was very organic we had a hunch that we would be successful because everybody wants to be but outside of that there was no like uh, intelligence there or anything like that uh, and mr hari haran's final question <laughs> books and people that inspired you i was reading a book which i just finished uh, fear of death uh, fear of mortality uh, I think it's very very interesting. Who's it by? The Denial of Death, Ernest Becker. Got it. Yeah. So he talks about how we as humans forget that we are creatures. Uh we have a certain amount of time here and the way we live life often is like we think we're going to be here perpetually. Mm. So why is it important for me as a 34 year old guy to know that average life span is 70 and I have 35 years left? and live my life according to that versus thinking i'm going to live on for you know hundreds of years in perpetuity it it's a very subconscious thing i think we live like that and we don't realize it mm. but when you put a finite number there i think you become uh, a better human being in many ways you become mm. socially relevant the amount of greed you have goes down and all of that yeah I mean I don't know why I'm referencing this but mm. I went to an ICSE school where mm. we had some fantastic poetry taught mm. to us uh and there was this poem about a greek goddess who falls in love with a really good looking human being mm-hmm. and she's just like enchanted by his raw sexuality and right. all that and all that's in a poem for kids right. 
she blesses him with the blessing of immortality hmm. but she doesn't bless him with the blessing of immortal youth hmm. so this dude becomes old wrinkly hmm. his body hmm. parts start falling hmm. off and the whole poem is very dark about hmm. how possibly being immortal is yeah. one of the biggest curses you can go through yeah. in life yeah teaching a 14 year old this yeah. changes 14 yeah. year old perspectives yeah. man you kind of echoed that thought yeah. in many ways um okay mr ankit asks as a founder of india's biggest trading platform what are the changes you guys are bringing in to pull in the youth of the country because yeah. even nitin echoed this thought that yeah. the youth is the big customer at zero yeah. tha yeah i think education is the only way uh, i think our system of pedagogy in india are Uh, we teach kids for 15 years how to make money hmm. but we don't teach them how to manage that money i think something is missing there and uh, it would be prudent for the government to add you know financial literacy early like hmm. middle school i think hmm. that structurally will change things got it. uh puna masks resources for learning stocks and finance for a beginner and she also asks a very interesting second question how much finance knowledge is enough mm-hmm. for you to begin investing in stocks the first one is varsity we have a platform which is great for beginners to the second one uh, i don't think there is a finite amount of knowledge that you can actually define because i don't think i have enough knowledge yet but mm. uh, as long as you know the rules i think probably more important than knowledge mm. yeah uh, a bunch of people uh, i'm going to highlight umang kelani's mm-hmm. question but a bunch of people have asked this same question mm-hmm. nitin has got a lot of fanboys and fan girls mm-hmm. by the way after yeah, our interview yeah. people love his rahul dravidness yeah. of life mm-hmm. how do you guys complement each other mm-hmm. and i know you answered this in past interviews mm-hmm. but are there no ego clashes because both of you all are such calm souls mm-hmm. man like mm-hmm. i can't imagine there being no ego clashes at yeah. all in like a 13 14 year career so my yeah. direct question is what's your solution to that and how do you all gel together as a team i think we have clear demarcations of what we do and uh, i don't mess with what he does and uh, we kind of like don't interfere in each other's roles that helps but uh, at the end of the day you know it's one life and your brothers if uh, if you don't have each other's backs forever who does right we remember that so even if there's a slight clash we you know it'll last for like 5 minutes or something you have cried in front of my co-founders yeah. that's how <laughs> like intense it. have you had like those emotional kind of i won't say cried but breakdowns with like <sighs> not breakdowns i i don't think we've had any large fights especially not no, about like i mean uh, not uh, by breakdowns i mean mm. on a more personal level like you're going through something traumatic mm. not just maybe in your professional life but yeah. in your personal life but some way your co-founders become as good as family oh. i mean your co-founders are your family <laughs> so it's a little awkward yeah. but Yeah no it does happen i have this issue where uh, i tend to keep things within and i don't communicate where i should so my interpersonal skills are uh, not up to par they're very bad nitin on the hand is much better he's uh, he has great eq and mm. he's very good at resolving conflict with his personal relationships so yeah uh ojas sharma asks how do you keep yourself motivated now uh the markets it's i don't know if it's motivation or addiction but one of the two is at play and <laughs> they keep it. me motivated <laughs> and what's your opinion on breaks because again when yeah. people are seeing this bootstrap monster mm. called zero tha mm. no one thinks that okay it's run by two human beings yeah. <laughs> who probably get yeah. tired and go to the maldives yeah. or wherever you all go but yeah so we don't really miss market days i haven't missed a market day in like over a decade uh, how do you blow off steam weekends okay Yeah, like we did last night. <laughs> <laughs> yes, a memorable night, man. Um, but that's that's why you know, I mean, and on a very personal level, mm. dude, that's such a gift of the podcast because yeah, even in real life scenarios, mm. when do you have the opportunity to go this deep with another human being? Yeah. So the podcast has helped me make friends. Yeah. Which then opened up my mind. That's all smart yeah. friends I'm making because yeah. if you're on the podcast, you have something to share. Yeah. big big blessing of my life and just like spending time with you mm. and your friends yesterday yeah. was just yeah. incredibly stimulating okay this is an interesting question prayag verma asks what was the pressure like in the early days of starting zero da mm. when apparently you guys were getting threatening calls from other brokers mm. because you all had like disrupted that whole mm. part of the finance world mm. actually it was not that bad uh, i think uh, it's overstated with time but uh 
even at the very beginning the people we worked with were our closest friends uh, like there were people who lived in the same apartment where we played cricket growing up and there were people who were friends first and then colleagues so we had a lot of fun with it we were not making a lot of money but we were definitely having a lot of fun mm. we would play counter strike for 5 hours a day <laughs> yeah to blow off steam like 5 hours a day do you think not that builds kidding. that builds a sense of teamwork Uh, I don't know about that, but it was a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Know, I feel football builds such a strong sense of teamwork oh, yeah. and team spirit. Yeah. Uh, like I force my mm. guys to play mm. football yeah. with me. Uh, Got to play football after this, guys. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, interesting question again. Prasant Medicharla asks, "What if every person in India learns mm-hmm. to trade on the stock market? Mm-hmm. Theoretically, what will happen?" it will be good uh, i think there are there is precedent there are countries in which 70 80% of the population has like? direct or indirect exposure i would say not trade but even in the us your 401k has some kind of equity component in it mm. i think it will become competitive it will become a larger market and it will become a great place for companies to raise capital at the end of the day is abhishek prasad asks mm. what is zerodha thinking of rural area development and actually i would also love to know this do you see rural mm. parts of india getting into fintech at all or just personal finance as a concept i th- i think yeah i think there's a trend which will emerge from all that has happened where urbanization will slow down to a large extent and tier 2 and tier 3 towns will start picking up mm. uh, it'll be interesting to watch what happens and how much uh, financial exposure those towns gain Got it. Okay, this is not a question. Just want to highlight there are a lot of questions about True Weekend coming in, mm. which is your brainchild. So, and these are like young kids. These are college mm. kids who are asking these questions. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I think almost all the other questions have been answered through the course mm-hmm. of uh, this uh, podcast. But I will ask you one last question yeah. from this rapid fire round. So Dhanva asks, what's the role of newspapers and current affairs mm. in your financial game? So I think she's asking about trading stocks. Mm-hmm. Do you think newspapers play a massive role? No. How I do you keep up so. with current affairs? Uh you do read the news, but I think uh what what have you replaced? I don't think I would call financial earning as news. Mm. Often they are not reported. I think reading a company's uh, balance sheet and actually seeing how revenues are changing and margins are changing makes a much more seminal impact hmm. than reading news which is being publicized because typically that's just for you know readership and everything is exaggerated. Right. Mm-hmm.